Hey guys, before we uh, start this video, I just want to let you know that this is the first video in a three-part series um, showing us how to first cape a deer head, bear head, and bear paws. So, what that means is for the next three weeks, once a week, I will be releasing a video. This first one is the uh, deer skull. I really hope that they are informative. I know they were for me, so I'm... Uh, Looking forward to hearing some feedback from you guys. Hopefully they are. I hope you guys enjoy the videos. If you do, click like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe. <laughs> okay, so I traveled to Malad, Idaho today to meet up with Casey Higley of Wild River Taxidermy. And um, I thought it'd be kind of fun to do a segment on... on uh, how to cape out the head on on a buck. This is a muzzleloader buck I just shot. And I also have a bear that I shot this spring that's been frozen. So he's gonna kinda show us how to do both of those uh, today. And I think I'll just get out of the way and let him go to work, so. All right, sounds good, thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay, what we're gonna do first, as you can see it's been uh, caped off the body. So now what we're going to do here is cape it off the head, kind of show you guys how to do that. First things first, we're going to take the knife, we're going to go down here and do a triangle, and then split it back to where we cut off the body. And this table, of course, doesn't want to play today. Pull that on there, that's the first thing we're going to do. When you do this, try to keep as much meat as possible on the head so the skin is as clean as possible. Makes life much easier for uh, your taxidermist. Okay, as you can see, we took, split that like that, and just kind of skinned where you can start seeing the ears there. So next, what we're gonna do, we're gonna remove the ears. Remove the ears here. As close to the head as possible. See that ear there is removed. Then to get the hide out around from the, the burrs, I like to use a screwdriver. I have a small one I put in my pack, so if I'm doing it up on the mountain, I use that one, but in the shop I use this old beat up big one here. Reason being, when you sit there and you cut along the burr here with a knife or with a scalpel, you can put a bunch of little holes and it just, it doesn't, doesn't create a good mounting uh, 
surface for when your taxidermist goes back to put it up against the, the horn burr. And so best way to do it, because you don't lose anything, you don't get any cuts, is to use a screwdriver. One side removed. Take the other side here. Okay, got the other side removed. Next, I like to go to the front of the head here on the mouth, and I leave about a quarter to a half inch around, and I just kind of make a cut line like that. And so you leave a quarter to a half inch of that lip skin that has no hair. Top and the bottom lid. Okay, when you've got that done there, around the lip, put it back up and start working down the head here. As you can see the white of the skin leaving all the meat on the head, keeping it just the skin, makes everyone's life easier. Okay, start 
working on the eyes here. Critical part of the skinning process, you don't want to cut the back corner of the eye. So what you do, stick your finger in the eye socket and you can feel the back corner of the eye. So as you're skinning, if you cut your finger, that means you've uh, gone too far. <laughs> Get it to where, see like that, you can feel your finger through there. And then cut the back connective tissue on the back corner of the eye. Get your finger there so you don't ruin the back corner of the eye there. Okay, when you get to the front corner of the eye here, let's, uh, let's get a little bit further down this first. Okay, when you get to the tear duct on the front corner of the eye, it's a pretty critical spot also. Take, you really dig deep in. I like to take a screwdriver and work that tear duct. Let's see where you are there. tear duct out like that. Little hole, but that's okay. Easy fix. Okay. Go to the other side here. screwdriver and pry that skin there out of that tear duct Oh, 
once you get it out like that. I like to use gravity as my friend, so I'll take the cape and drop it on the ground like that. Start peeling down the face. So the bottom jaw is completely disconnected now. So now we're just going to work on getting the nose disconnected. So you see when I disconnect the nose, I don't leave a lot of meat or cartilage on the skin. Most of it's all left on the skull. If you're not comfortable doing that, you can leave a lot more because it's a lot easier for a taxidermist to uh, take it off than it is to add it. You kind of can't add anything that's been taken off. <laughs> There it is. As you can see, not much meat left on it. Be a little bit of work that I have to do, but not very much. There's your head all caped off. She rolled up, put it in the freezer, or get it to your taxidermist. Perfect. That was awesome. Uh, I appreciate your time for that, no for sure. Um, I, you know, I know for me, around the eyes and the tear duct, it was uh, is something I wasn't comfortable with. So, so that was super helpful, as well as around the lips. I was totally doing those wrong. So that was good, all good information for me. And uh, I appreciate you taking your time to do this with no us. No problem, anytime. It was a lot of fun, and hopefully, it was uh, informational for everybody. Like I say, I know some of you guys probably already know how to do this, but for those of us that don't, I think that's some great information, and, and uh, hopefully it'll help us out in the field next time we're out. So, again, thanks for your time. Appreciate Thank you. It. Have okay. a great day.